bum, bum, da, 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 bum, bum, da. Hey guys, what's up and welcome back or to the Roomies Digest. My name's Christine and in today's video we are going to be starting another book of the month reading vlog. It's been quite some time since I did one of these vlogs um, just because I was kind of getting like bogged down with vlogging, um, especially with like the book of the month and the net galley. But I am finally back and ready to read some books because I do have quite a few that I want to get to. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you're here, welcome. Thank you so much for watching. And I will go ahead and get into the books that I'm going to be reading for this vlog. So I know for a fact that I'm going to be starting the Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. This is supposed to be a 1001 Nights kind of like retelling or perhaps like a nod to that story. It's in the vein of Devabad and definitely has like that Mina kind of like inspiration to it. And I don't really know much about what it's about other than like my trigger words, which were of course, Deva Bad. So this is a June, 2022 book of the month pick. And it just says, Luli Al Nazari is the midnight merchant, a criminal who with the help of her gin bodyguard hunts and sells illegal magic. When she saves the life of a cowardly prince, she draws the attention of his powerful father, the Sultan, who blackmails her into finding an ancient lamp that has the power to revive the barren land at the cost of sacrificing all jinn. With no choice but to obey or be executed, Luli journeys with the Sultan's oldest son and one of his infamous 40 thieves to find the artifact. Aided by her bodyguard, who has secrets of his own, they must survive ghoul attacks, outwit a vengeful jinn queen, and confront a malicious killer from Luli's past. Wow, I'm excited. I love A Thousand and One Nights. Like, first of all, do you guys even know how epic that original story is? A Thousand and One Nights is so much freaking fun. And I did actually just read Wrath and the Dawn, which I loved. I don't know what it is. It might, maybe, I, I really don't know what it is. I'm not sure. I think maybe just the storytelling, like that kind of storytelling where it's like an epic tale and like tales within a tale with like cleverness and morals that you learn along the way. Like, I think I just really love that kind of storytelling. And it's one of the reasons why I got into fantasy in the first place. But I really think this is gonna be so much fun. Like, obviously it's got the nods to A Thousand and One Nights because it's got the lamp, it's got the gin, it's got the, what, what was the other thing that was in here? Oh, the 40 Thieves. So I'm really excited to kind of see how this plays out because retellings can either be super great or super awful. But I've heard nothing but good things about this book and hopefully I really, really love it. So I'm definitely gonna be reading this. The second book that I'm gonna be getting to in this vlog is Dating Dr. Dill by Nisha Sharma. This was a March 2022 pick. So this book seems really interesting. It's definitely supposed to be like a hate to love romance. Essentially, like this young woman is kind of like struggling, I guess, to find love. And instead of kind of getting herself out there and like swiping on dating apps and things like that, she'd rather kind of just be to herself. But her father decides that he's going to sell like I think their family's home or something like that and in her kind of like will to keep the family home she was like I'll make a deal with you if I can get married in four months like I'll take the house and you know you can do your thing so she's got to find a hubby a husband in four months and the only person who's really I guess available is this is Dr. Dill like it's kind of like a Dr. Phil show like he basically goes on TV and like does like dating advice I believe and apparently he was doing like pretty well to raise money for like these uh, like a couple of charities or something but then once he gets into like this very viral fight with her on the internet all of those kind of like hopes and dreams get dashed can confirm the tropes once I actually get into it but it definitely is kind of like an enemy's to lovers, I believe. And this will be great because I am reading for the Studio Ghibli Readathon and I needed a hate to love, like an enemies to lovers story. So I think I am gonna be using this for that prompt. But yeah, so we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully it's cute. I wanted to read A Part of Your World, but I cannot find that book on our bookshelves. And I'm thinking that we may have accidentally unhauled it, which would be really, really sad because I've heard that that age gap romance is really cute. But that's pretty much what I'm going to be reading in this vlog. I might get to another one, we'll see, but definitely going to be reading these two at least. And I will let you guys know how I like it, how I like it. But yeah, so that's the intro to this vlog. Hope you guys enjoy. 
but yeah so anyway I basically just wanted to check in with the books and then let you guys know I'm gonna be going to take a COVID test because I'm working next week and then tonight we are going out to eat for Stephanie from Stephanie Bookish's birthday we're just gonna do like a cute little get together I think we're gonna go to like a Mexican restaurant. I'm not really sure, but that's the plan. That's on the docket for today. That's what we're gonna be doing. So you'll get some cute B-roll of that and I will check in with the books periodically as I get through them. But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this little eight minute intro and I'll see you in a little. Okay, dating Dr. Dill. <laughs> dating Dr. Dill. We're at about the 50% ish almost point of this book. And the premise, the premise, I don't know if I like specifically like told you guys what this premise is, but Dr. Dill, he does not believe in love. He thinks that love is bad for you, bad for your heart. And he's a cardiovascular doctor. So he thinks that the best relationships are like the matches that are made and it's like a relationship where you both agree to be like partners right no love involved whereas miss karina or rena as he calls her she is looking for a love match herein lies the issue so they get in a fight on tv his tv show because he does like a tv show basically to like raise money for a clinic that he wants to open they get in a fight on tv his reputation gets kick to the curb she looks like a herpy of a woman and like no one wants to date her they both have money issues that need to be solved that will be solved if they fake date and that is the premise of the book so the writing is a little like there's some moments where i get taken out of it you know what i mean like some moments where i'm like oh that's not spelled right or like you know some of the dialogue is a little off just like a little i'm just almost like oh there's like a little too many Taylor Swift references. But the plot, the story, that is very interesting. I like where it's going and I like the premise of it because a fake dating trip is always fun. And at the end of this, they're going to be like at her sister's engagement party. Okay, so that's the time limit. She has to like find a love match before her sister's engagement. And it's looking like she's gonna have to fake date Dr. Dill to convince her family that she's about to get engaged so that she can get the money to save the house, right? Because her dad's gonna sell the house. And he's like, if you want the house, you gotta buy it. And she wants it because that's where her mom, you know, she grew up with her family and that was like her mom's house and her mom has passed away. So anyway, it's looking like she's gonna have to get with Dr. Dill. Dr. Dill though, like this is the type of man, I guess men written by women, cause that's, those are, that's truly what it is. I haven't read a romance book written by a man where men act like this, but where they're like, oh yeah, no, I don't wanna be in love. Like I don't wanna be in a relationship, blah, 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 blah. But then the man is literally sprung from page two. Like this man is sprung on Miss Karina, okay? And she's really like, she's holding out, okay? She is really like, look, I am going to find a love match without you because I don't wanna be with you because you don't believe in love, okay? And like, I like that. You go girl, you go. Stay true to yourself because you know that he's not gonna be able to give you what you need. So don't settle. I'm liking it, okay? I like Miss Karina. It's just him. That's the stupid idiot. Obviously, if you're thinking about her all the time, you're not thinking about her because you're gonna get money from her thinking about her because you like her anyway so that's the 50 percent. that's what that's what's happening it's like shaping up it's like i would say it's probably like a four i mean the writing is like a little silly but i'm having a good time and like i want to know what's gonna happen next 
And that's the important thing with books, right? I do want to get back to this ASAP and figure out what's going to be happening because honestly, what would make this like so much fun is if she finds a guy that she really likes and brings him to the engagement party and Dr. Dill is over here realizing that he's in love so he's got to act crazy and do something super romantic. That would be a freaking awesome book. We're only halfway so that could happen. If that happens it'll take it from a 3.54 to a four to 4.5. For show, sure, for show. Sure. It's fun. It's fun. You know, it's no beach read, Brad Test or Kiss Quotient, but I'm having a good time. Okay, anyway, I digress. I'm assuming that I'm gonna fi be finishing Dating Dr. Dill tonight. We'll do a check-in then. And then if I see you again, not tomorrow, it'll probably be Monday. I'm working on Monday. So I'll get you guys some set footage, which isn't much, but it's it's kind of fun. And I'll, we'll get into the Stardust, Stardust Thief. But yeah, that's where we're at. That's what we're doing. Okay, cool. That's the check-in. Moral of the story. I'm having a good time. Hello. Good morning. Okay, it's Monday morning. Um, I am about to go take a COVID test. I'm like waiting because they open in 13 minutes and I'm taking a COVID test before I go to another production. Ah! So I thought I would check in with you guys on dating Dr. Dill. Okay. So recently in our discord, I had put that I was currently reading this book and I um, had somebody say that they rated it two stars. So I was really freaking worried. I was really freaking worried about the end of this book. And I'm not going to say that it's a five star. I'm not going to say that it's a four star really. I I mean, if anything, it's like a 2.53. I, th I, th I think a three, you know, maybe mm, a 3.5. You know what? I liked it a little bit more than a three. A three, I'm like, man, man about. But a 3.5, I'm liking it a little bit more. Like, obviously, I'm wanting to finish it because I'm liking it. And here's why. So the thing is, the characters in this book are super, super great. The plot is really, really cool and unique. And I like the setting of the book. I love being also like in the like throes of an Indian family and just kind of like having the chaos of planning a wedding and also having like the older sister be the one that's not getting married first with all the drama. So that was really, really, really fun. And I like the matchmaking aspect. Like I like kind of having this almost jealousy trope from the other like love interest because the main character is like going out and like going on dates and stuff. So I like all of those things. What I didn't like is that this adult romance felt a little like it was a YA. Just in the writing and the dialogue sometimes and the fact that our main character ends up calling his um, member, he ends up calling his member a certain nickname. And I'm just gonna say I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. When people, you know, start calling their extra members names and like cute little things, like I think it's maybe funny one time around if the girl is being or like the partner of the person is being funny and they're being like oh Mr. Schnookums or like whatever like that's funny that was a funny thing in uh How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days you know then we were over it then we were over it we did not like the nickname anymore okay so that was a little strange like I said the dialogue is like a little stilted sometimes like the dialogue was just a little like how do I explain it to you? Like we're in the throes of spice and then the dialogue sounds like it's being spoken from a 16 year old perspective. You know what I mean? So yeah, it wasn't all the time. It was just like sometimes a vibe and it threw me out of the book. That being said, there was some spice. The spice though also was an interesting thing that happened. I can't tell you the difference between a good spice scene and a like mediocre spice scene, but I feel like the spice scenes in this were like, it had like good tension leading up to it. And then when you were in the actual spice scenes, there was a lot of like what I kind of attributed to when I read um, A Touch of Darkness, it was like a lot of stop and go. And in between that, the like dirty talk is is basically just the word like rough, more, rougher, harder. Like that's the dirty talk. It doesn't really like go farther than that. It's just kind of like the same repetition. 
So not saying that like I, I need a variety in the spice scenes, like I don't need that, but it just like when there's a lot of repetition and this is not just in spice, this is in writing in general. When there's a lot of repetition, it just kind of takes me out. I'm like, okay, how many times can you be like rougher, harder, more, get it in, blah, blah, blah. Like if you're not doing it, you need to be doing it. You know what I'm saying? Cause obviously you're not listening if it's not going past what you're saying. I hope that makes sense. I don't know. 3.5 it was a fun time like I said worth it for the plot and the the characters not my favorite romance that I've ever read so I am going to be starting the Stardust Thief today so I'm really excited to get into that one because I've been wanting to read it for a while it's been sitting on my shelf so now is the time so basically I am going to go to go do my COVID test I'm going to go to set go to work and then hopefully I have some time while I'm at work to read but if not I'll check in and let you guys know how Stardust Thief goes because I'm I am very excited. I am anticipating a 4.5, if not a five star read. So let's get it y'all. I'm ready. I just want to show you guys this really cute bookmark I got. It's Alizade from David Bad, obviously. Look at him. He is so cute. Like, bless his little soul. He's so annoying. He is so annoying. But I love him. So, using my new, I got like all these David Bad bookmarks. Using all my little David Bad bookmarks. Anyway, so Stardust Thief. The name has been dropped. I believe I know, at least. The main focus of the book or maybe like what i can say is the definition of the book title has been dropped right so that's obviously gonna be important and come into play i just don't know how it's gonna come into play because i'm like over halfway through this book and i still don't know where we're going as far as plot it's like i know that we're on a journey like i know what the characters are supposed to be doing and so far right now i feel as though chelsea has just built these characters and kind of like given you a really a really good kind of view a really good look as to how they interact with each other and like who they are so she's definitely taking her time explaining things so we're getting a really nice clear view of the characters and also the world because the world building in this is very easily digestible very easy to understand and um i'm having a good time with it so far so it's shaping up to be about four stars like i said i'm only halfway so like we'll see how the end goes but as far as if you've read david bad will you like this book if you liked the characters in david bad if you like the world if you like the legends the myth the myth the legend david bad then you'll probably like this book if you liked it for the politics that's not showing up as much in this book. That would be a very like rare, very probably small portion of the readers who read this. But if that's what you're looking for, then it doesn't have that much like politics yet. That being said, the characters are really rich. The world building is really rich. The myths are really rich. And I really like that this book will kind of veer off when there's a myth mentioned or a legend mentioned. It will basically do this thing where it like gives you the legend. Like she explains the legend. So that's kind of how it's reminiscent of A Thousand and One Nights. I believe that and the 40 Thieves references. I'm like assuming that this one character is going to come in later and like be important, but I'm not sure. I mean, like Wilds would it be called the Stardust Thief? So anyway, that's something to ponder about. That's something to, to think about, but that's where I'm at with the 50% check-in so far. I'm having a good time. Don't really know where we're gonna be going by the end of this book, but I'm here for the ride. I'm here for the ride, so that's it. And I will check in when I get finished with this book and you guys will know my final thoughts on Stardust Thief. But so far I'm having a good time and that's really all I can say. See you later. Hello, it's me. First of all, let's do a little check-in. Um, Yeah, did I? just get back from a run this ain't sweat okay i actually just washed my hair and i've got to do some things to it anyway so i finished the stardust thief i think i'm settling at a four i think i've already kind of mentioned why i'm gonna give it the rating that i'm rating 
it, but I will just quickly go over. So I really like the premise. I liked the story and the plot like well enough. The pacing was pretty good in the beginning. Then it got a little kind of slow in the middle. And then the end was like a whirlwind adventure. So that was cool. That was fun. Like I enjoyed it. The characters are not as, how do I say it? You know what I mean? Like I would die for the characters in Devabad. In Stardust Thief, I feel like I know them. I'm interested in them. Would I die for them? Probably not. Probably not. I mean, I would extend a hand and help them up. You know, like a, a little uh, Mufasa thing. But would I lay down my life? Probably not. So anyway, but it was a really fun time. I really love the retellings in this book. I really loved the storyline. And it was just really interesting because obviously in this one, you see more of the interaction between the djinn and humans, where I feel like in Devabad, we kind of get like thrust into it. They're together for a little bit and then pretty much they're separated for a good portion of that book. So I really like that for this. I will be continuing on because I am interested, especially with how this book ended. We have a whole new thing going on at the end of this book and I'm excited to get into it and kind of see more of the gin lore and the mythology there. So I think that that it pretty much sums it up. It's pretty good time. Pretty good time. You know, other than the pacing, it was... A pretty good read but that's all I'll say about that so finish the Stardust Thief I think the next book and the last book that I'm going to be doing for this book of the month reading vlog it's going to be The Maid by Nita Prose so I've seen this kind of circulating around and basically what happens is there is a maid her name's Molly Gray she's like not the best with like social skills and like people interactions things like that so she basically just kind of like goes to work, does her thing, and minds her own business. She is a maid. And one day when she's going to clean a room, she finds the client, the renter, the person who had the room. I don't know what you call that. She finds that person dead. And so she basically has to be part of the investigation for, what's his name? His name's Charles Black. And apparently she finds herself in a sticky situation and she gets tied up in something that she really doesn't want to be a part of. So it says both a clue-like locked room mystery and a heartwarming journey of the spirit. The maid explores what it means to be the same as everyone else and yet entirely different and reveals that all mysteries can be solved through connection to the human heart. So that's interesting okay I like I'm 50 50 with mystery thrillers and like thrillers from book of the month like mysteries I guess so we'll see how it goes but it's a pretty thin book and this also I don't know when this came out because it's technically part of their thrills and chills selection but there are there are how many pages <laughs> it's less than 300 pages so that will be interesting to kind of see how this goes. So I'm excited to get into this. I feel like I have a nice wide selection of book of the month books this month. I had the romance, the fantasy, and now I've got my like mystery thriller. So we'll see how it goes. I'm excited to get into this one. I'll let you guys know how it goes. Okay. See you in a little bit. Oh my gosh. Sorry y'all. Lyndon A. Lewis just posted about the loss of a pet, like losing a pet. And it just made me sob like a child. Like I literally, where is he? I literally had to go over and like hug him and cuddle with him for a second because I was like because <laughs> it made me think of Sherman but that's not the point of this check-in the point is that we are gonna wrap up this vlog with the one the only the May okay so this book is not that long I think I mentioned this it's only like 270 289 pages so this is the first time that I've ever read like a mystery and just wanted to get to the ending like literally read the last chapter to see what the thing is because this book is so bad like this book is so bad so to let you guys know i'm on page like 95 i think i think it's like the i just finished a chapter it's a little less than halfway through this book but i cannot really stomach the rest of this book as far as there's a character in here that I don't know if she's like writing her as being autistic or if she's writing her as being just like a little more simple-minded I'm not sure it's not clear but I don't like it I don't like it if she's autistic I don't like how she's writing her because she's making her seem very like robotic with like no feelings and like nothing going on and I just don't think that that's how it should be portrayed and if she's not autistic and she is just kind of like a little more simple-minded but like struggles with social interactions and other nuances in her life then I don't like that either 
I don't like how this character is written at all. Like literally at all. So I'm pretty sure I don't actually really care. I actually don't really care about the mystery. I really don't because it's looking like basically everything's going to be blamed on the one character. And I'm like, if that's the thing, I'm going to be extra pissed. I'm going to be extra pissed. But I don't care enough to find out because I can't sit here and read about this character any longer. Like she really is Molly the Maid. Like she really is written in such a way that like I just can't. I cannot. I'm sorry. It's a DNF. It's a DNF. I know you guys were like, get to the point. It's a DNF, everybody. I'm not going to finish this book. In fact, I'm going to unhaul it immediately. The Maid by Nita Prose. That's really the thing about this book. I cannot finish it. Even though I don't even have that many pages. I just can't. That thing right there. Mm -mm. I'm not going to finish it. So it's a DNF for me. And that's really quite sad. I don't remember the last book I DNF'd because I don't do it often. Like I'm, I'm a, I'm a, a completist, a finisher. I don't know how to, what else you would call that. But, but yeah, like I said, I just can't take it. So I'm gonna stop talking about it, but that is going to be the end of this vlog. So just to recap, I did finish obviously dating Dr. Dill, which I'm going to put at a 3.5. It was a fun time. It was a good time. <laughs> And it really reminded me of that movie, um, Wedding Season on Netflix right now. Like I read that book, watched that movie, and I was like, wow, you know, enemies to lovers, fake dating. But yeah, so that was a 3.5. And then of course, Stardust Thief was a four stars. So that's it, guys. That's the end of this vlog. I hate that the end of this was on such a low level. But, like I have to tell you guys, I have been seeing this cover. This cover? I'm gonna show you. I have been seeing this cover all over everywhere. And I was very excited to read this book. Uh-uh, can't do it. Anyway, so that's that's my that's my thoughts. That's my my thoughts and my processes about this book. I'm gonna politely put it in the unhaul. I continuously have hits and misses with book of the month. Like some books that I always think are gonna be so 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 good, they end up being and then some books that I have never heard of before, and I'm like, what? What is this? Best books I've ever read. So I do think it is worth it to kind of vlog it and show you guys that experience. So hopefully if you guys are watching these vlogs, you're like getting something out of it. That's the vibe, that's it. That's the end of this vlog. I'm gonna officially end it. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this video, go ahead and comment down below and let me know what book you're most excited to read or you have read already. Go ahead and like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you wanna support me and Monique on this channel and click that notification bell if you don't wanna miss another video from us. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.